The Cooler Master 360 Ion Liquid Cooler is one of the easiest coolers to install ever, but if you need help, I'm here to lend a helping hand. So let's show you guys how to install it. This video is for demonstration purposes only. This is not a review of this cooler because every system, every motherboard, every case, every fan placement, and every setup is different. So make sure you research what's gonna fit in your case before you buy any parts for your PC build. This guide is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install this new Cooler Master 360 Ion cooler in both AMD and Intel systems. So make sure you watch the entire video before asking questions because chances are, I'm gonna answer all of those inevitable questions in this video right here. So let's answer some of those questions right off the bat. The case used, this is the Leon Lee Landcool 216. These parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only. Like I already said, there's no rhyme or reason as to why I chose them, they were just here. This video is not a discussion about pricing or performance of the cooler. Yes, the fan placement is correct in this video. The fans are pre-installed on the radiator, but like I said, remember every single case is different, so clearances in your case may differ. Yes, this does have RGB, and no, your motherboard does not require RGB to use this cooler. And you can also put whatever fans you like on this cooler. Yes, everything you're seeing in this video is included in the box, except for the PC hardware and the PC. Yes, it will work with basically every single motherboard and CPU combo that you'll ask about in the comments into the foreseeable future, including AMD's and Intel's future generations. And no, you don't have to fill up this cooler to maintain it at all. Let's see what you get in the box and how to install it. Here it is, the Cooler Master Master Liquid 360 Ion. Let's take it out of the box and have a little bit of a look at what's going on in here. To be honest, there's a lot less than you would think because this is a very, very easy cooler to install. It's all got numbers on it and there's a QR code if you wanted to look up the install guide online, but that's the point of this video, guys. This video is to help you install it, but let's get that cooler out so we can take a look at all of the little accessories and all the mounting gear and everything you need to get yourself started. Don't worry, guys, I'm gonna hold your hand. First of all, we've got all of the Intel mounting gear. We've got all of the AMD, AM4 and AM5 mounting gear. And this is the accessory box with everything else required. You can see here that everything is labeled from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so and so forth. And it kind of gives you an idea of the order that you need to install things in. But as usual, I'm not gonna be following the order of this. I'm going to show you the best order to install this cooler for both AMD and Intel systems. Let's jump into the AMD installation. In this example, we'll be using an AM5 motherboard, right? First of all, you'll want to locate this box here with the AM5 and AM4 mounting gear. As well as that, we'll need the accessory box because there's a few things we're going to need to mount this on your motherboard. This is the required mounting gear, nothing more, nothing less. And this is to mount the cooler to your motherboard itself. First of all, you'll want to locate this bracket here. This is the AM4 slash AM5 mounting bracket. And the easiest way to install this is removing the plastic sticker on the bottom of the cold plate, not both stickers, just this one here. Otherwise it will prevent you from installing the bracket. And then you'll want to lower that bracket into place and push down, rotate and lock the bracket into place. I'll show you this again from the top down, basically line it up with the gap, push down, rotate and it will clip into place. You want to give it a little bit of a wiggle just to test that it's locked into place and you should be good to go. Next up, we'll want to remove the stock mounting brackets that come on your AM4 or AM5 motherboard. If it's AM5, you don't need to put the backplate in. If it's AM4, use the factory backplate. And we'll just continue to remove this mounting gear. Locate this bolt here. The side with the bigger threads goes into the motherboard and the smaller threads face upwards. What you want to do is finger tighten them into the stock backplate and mounting holes on the motherboard and rinse and repeat that process until all four of the bolts are in place. Do not over tighten these because 
it'll be a problem later on if you ever need to remove this. Also, make sure you keep your factory mounting hardware just in case you ever switch your cooler at a later stage. This is for Intel mounting on either LGA 1200 or 1700 or Intel's future socket. Okay, first of all, you'll want to locate this box here. It'll say Intel LGA 1700 or Intel LGA 1200 slash 11.5X and the accessory box. To mount this cooler to your Intel-based motherboard, you'll need this mounting hardware here. There are four bolts and four nuts in total. You'll also need this. This is the mounting bracket. And the way to mount this bracket to the pump top and the cold plate itself is by pulling off the plastic that covers the cold plate, but not both of them, because you're gonna wanna need that on there for a bit later, I'll explain that to you. And you'll want to push that over, rotate and lock it into place. I'll show you this one more time from the top down, lower it in place, you'll see the gaps, then you'll want to rotate it, push down, and it will lock into place and make sure you give it a little bit of a wiggle to make sure that it's in there. Next up, you'll want this. This is the backplate for Intel based installations. Now you'll need to adjust it based on your motherboard. The inside offset is for LGA 1200 and the outside offset is for LGA 1700. And these are very easy to move. Now, what I would recommend doing is placing the backplate on a flat surface and typically I would lower the motherboard down onto the back plate. If your motherboard is already in your case, then you can just hold it by hand. But this is the way I would do it if the motherboard hasn't been put in yet. Then you'll want to locate four of these bolts and we're going to finger tighten them onto the back plate. The bolts that come up through the back plate are there already. So you don't need to do anything fancy to get that to work. And just rinse and repeat that process until all four of those mounting standoffs are in place. Now, we often get asked whether or not there should be some movement once you've mounted Intel coolers with their backplates, and the answer is yes. There's always a little bit of movement. The next steps you're seeing here are the same for both Intel and AMD installations. The only difference here is the mounting that you installed on the pump top itself, but everything is basically the same here. You want to locate this cable here. This powers the pump top itself, as well as all of the lighting and the pump, right? Now, what you want to do is locate this end here. This end plugs into the cooler itself, and you'll want to locate this connector on the pump top. You'll then want to plug that long plug into that header on the pump top, and it can only be plugged in one way. The holes are keyed, so yeah, it's a one-way connector. Then locate the USB cable. What we're going to do is plug that micro USB cable, which is this end here, and then plug that into the pump top. On the pump top itself, you will see a micro USB port. Plug that cable in, and it kind of clips. Don't push too hard, but it should go in without too much force. You'll then want to get your hands on some thermal paste. I thought it might be funny to try something a little bit different here and use different colored thermal paste in all of these holes. But basically this is how this works. You put enough thermal paste into each of these holes and then there's a card that comes in the box. It's like a Cooler Master card and you want to smear that thermal paste and kind of massage it into the holes to make it spread evenly and this might take a couple goes, but you'll get it right. I believe in you, ladies and gents, and yeah. Then you want to peel the sticker off, and as we peel it off, pay very close attention to what happens to this gray mess of thermal paste. Check that out. Perfect thermal paste coverage, and we're ready to go. Right, let's get it installed. We want to locate 12 of these screws here. These are the screws that will mount the radiator to your case. As mentioned before, every case is different. We're installing this radiator at the top of this Landcool 216. What I suggest doing here is just kind of lining it up, getting it to line up with the holes on the top of the case. And then you want to put one screw in. Don't do it up all the way. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to adjust it. You want to put one in the opposite corner. Again, don't tighten it up all the way. And the idea here is to put four screws in, so then the whole radiator is held up, and then you can kind of adjust it to where you need it to be, 
And then once you've got it in the right position, whiz all of them up. All 12 screws should go in. Now, you don't have to put all 12 in, but if you're new to PC building, I would definitely do that. Now, we've got all the fan cables that are on the pre-installed fans on this cooler. And to make your life easier, pass them through to the back so we can wire them up a little bit later on. Next up, we're going to find four of these nuts here and we're going to mount the cooler to your motherboard. Here's the fun part, ladies and gents. Now, for Intel and AMD installation, this is the same process. Keep in mind that the mounting hardware is slightly different, but the idea is exactly the same. Like I mentioned in the start of the video, guys, the fundamental idea of how to install this cooler. Basically line them up with the standoffs on the motherboard and put the bolts in. I typically do this in a diagonal pattern just to distribute the pressure a little bit better and don't do them up all the way to start off with. Just make sure they're all in there. Now that that's all tightened up, we've got a couple cables to deal with. Again, we wanna grab all of those cables and pass them through to the back of the system so we can deal with all of that in a moment. First of all, we'll plug in the USB cable. Locate a USB header on your motherboard. It typically looks like this. It's a nine pin header. Locate this side of the cable. And what we're going to then do is plug that into the USB header on the motherboard. This only plugs in one way. You can't mess this up. You can't plug it in backwards by mistake. So don't worry guys, it's all good to go. Now you want to locate this PWM connector. This is to power the pump, right? There's a couple ways to do this. This is probably the easiest way to explain this, but most motherboards will have a header called CPU opt or CPU fan. If it's an ASUS motherboard, I would use the CPU fan header. Any other motherboard won't complain and you can use the CPU opt header. So you should be good to go. Because this is a gigabyte board, I'll be plugging it into the CPU opt header. But realistically, it doesn't matter because the software allows you to control the pump speed. Next up, we're going to plug in the power. You want to locate the SATA power cable coming from the pump top and a SATA power cable from your power supply. You want to plug that in. This only plugs in one way. It's a little bit firm at first. Plug it in and you should be good to go. Next up, we want to locate this three-way PWM splitter. This also comes from the cable on the pump top and you want to locate the fan cables that we passed through from the front previously and we want to plug in all three of those fan cables into this splitter. You rinse and repeat that process until all three are plugged in and now your fans will spin. Well, hopefully they'll spin if everything went to plan. Next, you want to locate these plastic clips. These are for RGB connectors so they don't accidentally become unplugged. What you want to do is get all of the three fan RGB cables and you want to link them together leaving one end open for the pump top. So essentially what you want to do is plug that in and then you'll use that plastic clip to hold it into place. Once you push the plastic clip on, give it a bit of a yank to make sure it doesn't unplug. And then once you've tested that and it's all good, you want to repeat that process one more time. So then all of the lighting for the three fans are then plugged in, right? Then you'll get that plastic clip and then you'll clip that plastic clip over those two connectors again, give the cables a little bit of a yank to make sure they don't come unplugged. And then you'll want to locate this connector. This is from the pump top. Pull that plastic cap off, and then you wanna get the open-ended cable from the fans, plug that in, get another one of those plastic clips, put it over the top so it doesn't accidentally come unplugged. Give it a little test to make sure it isn't unplugged and you'll have one end open for expansion. Optionally, you have these clips for the tubes. You don't have to use these, but they do look kind of cool. Basically, you just clip them onto the tubes and then you can slide them into a different position depending on how you want to have it look. Now, if everything went to plan, you power up your system, it should look a little something like this, but we're not done yet. Because this is a cooler with a big old screen, there's a little bit more to do. You'll want to head over to the Cooler Master website and download Master Control. This is the software control required for the 360 ION. Once you've downloaded the installer, just go through the installation process, install it, click yes a bunch of times. You really can't mess this up, guys. Just take your time read everything if you need to. And once the installation is completed, 
We'll jump into Master Control and show you exactly how to configure the cooler and some of the cool stuff it can do. First of all, let's take a look at the fan setup here. Now, there's a lighting sync mode, which will sync all of the lighting on the entire cooler together, but you can use single model mode. And what this allows you to do is use every fan and lighting element individually. And you can see here, I can click identify and or blink to indicate which one is active. So you can assign different effects to each individual element. And basically you just select the one that you want to change and the effect and you can change the colors and all that stuff. This is pretty standard RGB stuff, but the best thing about this is you can really experiment and have some fun with the lighting here. But the most exciting thing about this is, you know, just making it unicorn spew. That's my favorite look with all this RGB stuff. But the real reason you buy something like this is for the screen. Now there is rotation control when we click the device settings, so you can rotate it by 90 degrees each way. And I'm wondering if you can type in a number. I didn't test that, but yeah, you can rotate it any which way you like. To control what's on the screen, click the LCD bar on the side and then you can go through the different modes. We've got system info. This is pretty standard for coolers with screens. We've got a dual type of display, which you can assign to either GPU or CPU. You've got different types of layouts as well, different types of effects. There's really a lot you can do with this. And I got to say the animation is really, really nice on this cooler, a lot better than I thought it was going to be. But people want to know if you can put images on it. Of course you can. And I thought this cat image was really appropriate here, but you can do any animated image that you like. As well as that, you can do a clock face. You can basically set it to any type of clock, 24 hour clock. You can do analog clocks. You can do date and time. I mean, your options are almost endless here. There are a couple things that I couldn't test, but basically you get the idea. Oh, look, it's a marquee. Yeah, you guys get the idea. You want to put images and stupid stuff on your coolers? You can, and it's really easy. Alrighty, if this video helped you, let us know in the comments down below. Like and subscribe and all that jazz. I'm your boy Nick, you peak, we seek. And I hope I could help you out with installing this brand new cooler from Cooler Master. Or not.